meeting to order. Connor, you can do us the honors with an invocation. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Rob. Hello, everyone, and uh, hope everyone's enjoying this. Hopefully, it's an early start to spring around here. I know we all know how that can change quickly in Northeast Ohio, but uh, today is March 9th, and I wanted to share uh, something that just been on my mind was a feeling of gratitude for our club, uh, the friendships and relationships I have within our club. I, I'm, I'm sure most of us, uh, maybe not all of us, but most could say some of our dearest friends and, and colleagues are within our fine club and just something I was feeling very grateful for today. And then, of course, uh, this this devotional or, if you will, daily reading from a book called The Daily Stoic, um, I found particularly fitting. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, it starts off with a quote, and it says, from good people, you'll learn good. But if you mingle with the bad, you'll destroy such such soul as you had. Jim Rohn's widely quoted line is, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. James Altucher advises young writers and entrepreneurs to find their scene, a group of peers who push them to be better. Your father might have given you a warning when he saw you spending time with some bad kids. Remember, you become like your friends. One of Goethe's maxims captures it better. Tell me with whom you consort and I will tell you who you are. Conscience, consciously consider whom you allow into your life, not like some snobby elitist, but like someone who is trying to cultivate the best life possible. Ask yourself about the people you meet and spend time with. Are they making me better? Do they encourage me to push forward and hold me accountable? Or do they drag me down to their level? Now with this in mind, ask the most important question. Should I spend more or less time with these folks? The second part of Gote's quote tells us the stakes of this choice. If I know how you spend your time, he said, then I know what might become of you. So uh, for me, I, of course, I'd love to spend more time with all of you and, and can't wait till we're able to spend time in person together again. But uh, I wanted to share that because I thought it was fitting and, and certainly uh, an investment with uh, our fellow Rotarians is, is time well spent and in good company. So if you just bow your heads real quick. I'll close this in a brief prayer. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. Uh, just for this fine club that we're all so blessed to be a part of. Uh, it asks that you bless our interactions with our fellow members, foster our friendships and relationships, both personal and professional, and uh, let us honor you through our words, actions, and behaviors with each other, our communities, and the world uh, today and every day. Amen. Thank you, Connor. And now our Pledge of Allegiance. Join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and, and to the republic for which, which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice. and justice for all. Cheryl, may we have the four-way test? Okay, the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is, is it fair, fair to all concerned? Concern. Will it build, build goodwill good will and better friendships? Better friendships? And will it be will beneficial, beneficial to all, all concerned? Concern. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, Connor's doing double duty as the invocator and the greeter. So, Connor, can you uh, welcome our guests or identify them? Yes, I am looking through here. Um, guest wise, let's see. Anyone, if you have a guest, um, let's see. Jenny, do you, do you have a guest with you today? Up, oh, you're, you're on mute. No, you're on mute here. He's a member no, now. I am oh, a member. Okay, that's my that is my apologies. I sincerely apologize. Woohoo! Yes, yes, I forgot about that. My apologies. Welcome. Uh, Claudine, you're you're here, I believe, as a guest, correct? Even though I don't consider you one. You're on mute. Welcome, Claudine. Hold on, you're still on mute. If you had something. Yes, yes, I, I am a guest. In fact, uh, Jack Arig invited me today because I, I am representing um, Global Ties Akron today, and see if we can uh, partner with the Rotary Club, maybe. So, awesome. Claudine. One of the things that we've been doing as a, as a, pre, uh, a premature action on the, the strategic plan we will talk about is in your byline, as your, your Zoom uh, call, please put the name of your company. 
so that people will know and maybe write that down. And if they want to network with you, they'll have additional information uh, other than all the goodwill that you've already generated here. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. I, I can put uh, my email in the chat also. Thank you. All right. Welcome, Claudine. And uh, yes, I believe, unless I'm missing anyone, that's it. Um, I, I'm, I know there's some folks just without video on, um, but I don't see any other guests at the moment. Cheryl, do you, or if anyone does, please raise your hand. I can see the, the group and uh, we'll, we'll acknowledge them. I don't see anybody I else. That's it, Dr. Rob. All right, thank you. Well, as you know that this is um, Women's History Month, or you may not know, but with that in mind, I thought, well, how do I link that to Rotary? So I have a two-part question. Uh, when were women officially admitted to Rotary? Anybody want to guess for a Starbucks card? Uh, let's see if I see any hands. You can raise your hand now. I'm not on my computer. I'm on my iPad, so I can actually see. No takers. Well, then let me try another question. 1988. Who said I that? Guess. Jack. Jack, mm -hmm. you, you are very close. And there's a technicality. So I think I'm, I'm going to give that to you because it was, it was 1989. However, there was a Rotarian who ascended quickly in a club by the name of Dr. Sylvia Whitlock. And she joined a Rotary Club in 1984, the club was then excommunicated or whatever it is that Rotary does to say it's, it's a, an ex-Rotary club. It wasn't a Rotary club. And she actually came, became the president in 1987. And the Supreme Court then ruled that her club needed to be reinstated. So we had the first female president that was already in place when they were retroactively put in. So again, the, <laughs> what, what the, the right answer according to the history that I was able to research was 1989. What's the good news is by 1990, we already had 20,000 women in Rotary. And by 2010, we had 10 times that. So it was exponential growth because it was long overdue, but I thought that's a interest, well, to me, <laughs> And you know, I'm a nerd. I found that to be an interesting fact about Rotary. And I was shocked that it wasn't until 1989 that we woke up and recognized what we were missing. And looking at our club today, I celebrate our variety, our diversity, at least in gender and, and age, and we're making progress in other areas. All right. So for a, uh, an icebreaker, you know, last week I have to appreciate. I have to thank all you folks who gave me additional uh, TV shows to watch. I've been peeking at a couple of them, but I still haven't finished um, Schitt's Creek. So, I, so I, I've been. I am, I'm only allowed two shows in at any one day, so I, it'll be a while till I catch up to the rest of you. So today I thought, you know, with spring fever coming, and the CDC's recommendations or laxing of recommendations that says. If you are vaccinated, you can have a small group of vaccinated friends who don't have any people in their lives that are vulnerable that they see on a regular basis that you can get together for a non-distance, non-mask event. And I think that's monumental because it really is the first of, of a deliberate reopening look by the CDC. So. If you've got spring fever, like I sure did yesterday, uh, the, the answer is if you're vaccinated and you're gonna have some people over, uh, imagine what that might be like. And two, if you're not vaccinated or you don't plan to have people over, what is the thing that you are really ready to bust out for spring fever? Michael Shearer, you're top right of my screen. So uh, have you digested this opportunity? Yes, I have, Rob. Um, I think we're looking forward to having my in-laws over, my dad and his wife over, and just getting the family back together best we can. So I think that would be our 
our uh, number one priority. And uh, I know my wife and I will be wanting to get a, uh, get out and look for uh, a new mattress and shop for some things that we've decided we won't, won't, don't want to do online. We're waiting for those opportunities too. Excellent. Steve Boser. I'm just looking forward, Dr. Rob, to uh, uh, getting the fraternity brothers back together for dinners and drinks and friends and um, just hanging out with the people that are important in my life. That's awesome, Steve. And just a reminder, because again, this is my job at my day job. Um, people have taken that to mean that you can congregate at work and, and eat with friends. And that's not what the CDC said. You can have small groups in your home or in one of your friends' homes. So that's that's the baby steps we're taking. Let's not blow it. All right. Let me ask Sandy there again. Sandy, you're not having sound. At least I don't hear her sound. Does anybody? Oh, type it in the chat and we'll read it. In the meantime, I'm going to ask John Daly. John, you're vaccinated. Uh, do, you have, do you have a plan in the making? And you're muted, John. You're still muted. Cheryl, can you unmute him? There you go, John. Okay. Do I have a plan for what? Well, do you have a plan now that you are judiciously to allowed to have small gatherings in your home or in a friend's home as long as everyone's vaccinated and none of those vaccinated friends have a loved one or someone they're in contact with that's considered vulnerable? No, um, of course, my wife passed away several years ago and my children live out of state. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren are all very far away. So uh, uh, I do my three days a week swim at the Lifestyles and, and grocery shop on Thursday and, and uh, meet with Rotarians on Tuesday and that's about it. Okay, well, that's, that's you're squeezing in a lot of stuff, and um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you ready. We'll get you ready as things can continue to liberalize. Uh, Tamara, do you and Joe have some plans? First, it would be to get vaccinated, but until then, I have grandiose plans to maybe take tennis lessons this summer. Um, uh -huh have lots of people over just to not feel um, so isolated here, but that'd be crazy. Okay, and Mario, it's good to see you again. Mario, what, what, what's up? I, I, I apologize, those of you that are under 50, you don't have an option to get the vaccine yet, but it'll be coming soon. Well, the good news for me is that I just heard yesterday that if you are 50, they're opening it up. And I did, in fact, turn 50 in October. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, it's great to hear someone say that turning 50 is good news. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I'm also looking forward to uh, my third child who's due mid-April. So. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Let me go to Susan. So tell me about your spring fever. Are you going to get out in a dragon boat or what? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get in the dragon boats. And if not, why kayaks will do. Uh, but I'm looking forward to being able to meet with friends to discuss books that we've read because we've been um, either just, you know, briefly saying what we liked about it, but not really discussing anything. So that will be fun. And my sister just got her shot today, my brother-in-law. So I'm looking forward to getting together with them without masks. It will be a change. I hope we all recognize each other. If you're not on a Zoom uh, Brady Bunch video here. And let's bring it home. Uh, David Hall. 
Well, yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to uh, getting back to our uh, monthly poker games in person. Uh, we did online for a while, and uh, it was kind of exciting. So, um, I'd love to invite John Daly. If you got a couple quarter, uh, a cup of quarters, John, weren't happy to join us for poker. <laughs> what's, what's your minimum ante? I think all John needs is that. If it's if it's a fifty cent, fifty cent, match, <laughs> that's all he needs. He'll that's take all he quarters. needs. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Are there any Rotary ambassadors, anybody who's been to another club or to a presidential training or anything that interacts with other Rotarians outside our club in this past week? I went to, uh, this is Sam Lapica. I went to Zoom Southeast Springfield, Missouri on Thursday. Oh, wow. Rotary. Wait, what, what time of day did they meet? Uh, it's noon on Thursdays, but one o'clock here. Good. Did they have an interesting speaker? They did. They had the general manager of the uh, minor league baseball team. And he was discussing oh. what they were doing to make some changes and make it all work this year. So. Well, I just got in my, in my day job, I just got the safety proposal for the rubber ducks. And it looked like it would pass our mustard. And hopefully we will have a cancer day for our cancer uh, kids. And we've already got them spaced out in their pods at the stadium. So it's exciting to think that it's going to be actually baseball again. That it is. Any other uh, ambassadors? Uh, Vivian and I attended the uh, past district governor's uh, gathering online this past week and we had the biggest number we've had together in a long time and I think probably some of the good news is one of the people that wasn't there was not there because they were out on a service project. I'm sorry I lost the last two words on what kind of project a service project? He, yeah he was uh, with Jade Drazilla he had some service project that he was involved in online and so he was not with us, but we had uh, we had a good number of people there. It was a, a good gathering. Excellent. The, uh, in addition to that, incoming governor laid out some of his plans and you can watch for some good things happening. Well, that's exciting. Any other ambassadors? All right. A uh, few announcements, Thursday, April 22nd, that's when our district meeting starts and we'll have more information will be coming out soon. Uh, congrats to President, past President Pat O'Neill. I don't know if Pat made it from the, the board meeting over here, I'm looking, but those of you who read your Aquatarian recognize that Pat's dad actually passed the torch so our past president is now the president of O'Neill Insurance. So congratulations, Pat. As you recall, last week we talked about the fact that Happy Dollars has an opportunity to have a visual as well as an audio, but that requires you to plan a little bit in advance, at least Monday noon uh, yesterday. And we have our first, besides my grandson, now we have our first uh, yeah. member that is to be uh, displayed there, Cheryl. Jerry? <laughs> I'm waiting for the car. <laughs> 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 my car conked out, rusted out. Um, this license plate is in my kitchen, rarely displayed. I am so excited. Uh, I am Dr. Geraldine Kiefer. And I am going to be a proud Rotarian in Akron, Ohio with my 2018 Mazda 3 coming on Thursday. Awesome. So you'll, see me, you'll see me flaming all over the town. Awesome. And how happy are you? Uh, $25 worth. Wow, you're ecstatic. All right, thank you. Glad you're at your first official meeting as a member. Yep. And there's another, there's another uh, pictorial and we know that beautiful young lady, she looks a lot like her mom. Jolie, do you wanna say anything? 
So um, we shared this on social media. If you follow us, um, it is a heck of a semester with uh, all the stuff that Kimberly's doing. And I think I need to take a picture of this, so don't let it go down too quick. But um, <laughs> it, uh, if you've been reading the news, it's been extra stressful this past week um, for their Greek community at Bowling Green. And I think they, uh, they need uh, some up, uplifting um, prayers there. And uh, but this comes at, a, at an unusual time as she finishes up her last semester of college. And there's four years, just gone in a blink of an eye. So um, it kind of matches perfectly with being 50 and I can get the vaccine on Thursday if they have any openings. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a good time to be happy. That's for sure. All right. Well, I have a shot of that if you lost it, so don't worry oh, about thank it. Thank you. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming in your text. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else happy? Katie Miller. Uh, who's that? David Miller. Katie Miller. Katie, Katie Miller. Miller. Um, I am five dollars happy. Um, looking forward. We got some news yesterday from our daughter who works at Playhouse Square that live entertainment is coming back to Playhouse Square much sooner than we anticipated. It'll be announced on April 7th, so stay tuned for that and some news about two Broadway shows coming. So that's super exciting and it made a big day in our house. I'm super happy to say that Tim and I are postponing our spring camping trip until we can get both of our vaccine doses and we are happy to do so. Uh, so we'll be heading down later than we anticipated, but um, when my daughter texted me yesterday, uh, Governor DeWine's uh, thing. Uh, she was up in her office. I was downstairs. I, I really did. I burst into tears because I felt like I've been living in trauma and was just so relieved that the opportunity is going to be right there around the corner. Well, I'm glad that's a good reason to, to defer your uh, camping spree. All right. Anybody else happy? All right. Well, my time management on my first call left a little to be desired. So I'm going to move into our uh, speaker for today. And that's me. <laughs> and it's going to be you too, because this meeting was put on the book so that we can discuss the, the, uh, the, the work that we did with the uh, strategic plan reboot. So Cheryl, could you put the slides up? Now, what I did is I tried to summarize all, all the facilitators and their scribes put together the discussion of the of their day with the with our when we broke out in the breakout sessions. I attempted to pull this together and vetted it with the leaders. They edited it. It came back to me, and I did share it with members of our board. So I think what's fascinating and I'm not surprising is that many of the uh, many of the the little areas, not the little areas, but the main uh, strategic elements, when we ask people to fill out what would they do for two to three activities that they can launch, uh, they did that nicely, and there's remarkable overlap. So there are a couple activities we can do, and we will check off several of the boxes for each of these groups. So I thought that was fascinating. I attempted, again, I'm a visual learner. So uh, you can see what I attempted to do is to, uh, initially I tried to make a Venn diagram with all six items. And if you can imagine getting six circles on a slide, it looks pretty tiny. So what I compromised is the center one that's got the blue, the darker blue shading is the main one for visibility and impact. Tom Canauer was the facilitator and Susan Cobble Hall was the one that took notes. And their main items is really to really look at our annual service project planning process and create standard work for service project development and vetting. And how do we weigh the impact, since this is visibility and impact, with some objective measures. So developing some sort of a scale or a service project work group, which sounds pretty exciting. And then they would outline project frameworks, uh, emphasis on whether it's a recurrent annual project, whether it's a once and done, whether it's either of those and international, 
or whether it's shared with a diverse community or another club and create a grid of our current regularly occurring projects. This would again help with our visibility, communication, engagement, um, inclusivity, those are the two circles that, that intersected there. And their third piece was to distribute the bio information of new members, which Cheryl has already implemented. So even though um, Tom and Susan overachieved uh, and put three in and only had to do two, they've already got credit for the third one, thanks to Cheryl. So Susan and Tom, do you want to add any other color or, or reframe my efforts? Yeah, Rob, thanks. I would just say that I think the, the, to, to simplify this, we just want the, the impact of the club to be more trackable and reportable. The club does a lot of things, but I think if we add a little bit of structure to it um, so that everybody can get a readout and report as to what we have on the schedule, what we do, when it's complete, and the impact, I think that will be more meaningful for more members and it'll help us uh, gain momentum and get more people involved. You know, we want to we want to put some some data behind our efforts as opposed to having kind of an anecdotal report. Well, we you know we raised funds here or we collected food from the food bank. Those are great efforts, but I think we want to encapsulate those efforts so that everybody can see what the club does and track our successes so that we, we know where our efforts are best used. I think that's great, a great, great additional color commentary. Tom, did your, did your group have any specific people that wanted to take ownership of any of these to be part of the action team? Yes, we've implemented that plan and have a couple of folks that have been tapped for specific uh, roles and everybody seems to be excited about it. So we'll continue to share information with the, the, the club as we move forward. And did you have any, that if, do you have any holes that if there are people on the call, on this meeting that would like to join in with you, that they could check in with you? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think we have holes, but I think we certainly don't wanna be exclusive and leave anybody out. Those that were involved in the initial discussion know who they are and all of them are welcome to participate. I didn't reach out to everybody only because I want to keep uh, the effort focused, but if I didn't reach out, that doesn't mean I didn't appreciate the input and uh, did, didn't mean that, that other folks aren't welcome. So the entire no, we just group have to have, we have to have a focus, some focused leaders. That doesn't mean that uh, you know everybody's you know some of you were randomly assigned to groups. So if there's something that excites you as we go through the next five as well, please write that down or contact. Uh, the people's the, the members' names on the top of this slide. Yes, and anybody who's interested in participating can reach out to me, and we'll certainly welcome your input and your uh, efforts. Thank you. And we'll put these slides on the website uh, on the Aquitarian so that you can tap and see where these are going. Because again, all, all we showed there was the you know the top three things we highlighted those, but the other elements of where that's headed is also on the slide and that's pretty exciting. Okay, inclusion. I saw David Hall, I don't know if Blake was on today, but inclusion, um, their deliberate strategies to do short term is set up a joint virtual opportunities with other organizations to highlight their cultures or food or drinks. So this sounds, again, David, you can fill that in a little bit more, but it sounded like we we're looking at uh, maybe cultural fraternities or or um, ethnic uh, areas, people maybe on the hill, and enhance partnering efforts with Rotaract and Interact because inclusion isn't just people who don't necessarily look right just like me. Uh, they may look like a younger version of me. Um, so Rotaract Interact so that we can actually connect and then specifically the fraternities and sororities that we could reach out to and offer labor or financial support for some of their service projects. So meet them where they are. And then a deliberate strategy to engage more diverse groups, timeline and staging. That's a little bit re redundant, but that's what the engagement team was talking about. 
So that's where the overlap is here. The other piece that was, was mentioned in both the innovation and inclusion is developing membership pathways. And for inclusion, that was really, if we could have a, a cheaper way for a member to join when they're in the beginning of their career, that it would be nice to have that pathway. Also corporate pathways, and I believe there was a married couple pathways. And you can see long-term Dan O'Connell already has some experience um, developing uh, a speakers bureau, which in addition to inclusion, would be reasons we'd get invited to clubs, but that's also increasing our impact and our visibility. So uh, Dave or, or uh, Blake, if you're on, do you wanna add anything else there? Yeah, thanks Dr. Rod, but yeah, Blake couldn't make it. He had another engagement, but um, yeah, the, you did very well. Um, you know, the, the virtual opportunities, hopefully in person uh, coming soon, maybe by summertime. Um, with other cultural organizations, you hit it nail on the head uh, with, with uh, maybe like North Hill and, and some other type of, of cultural organizations. Um, is, and mm -hmm. then the, uh, the partnering efforts with Rotaract Interact. And uh, we specifically thought about the fraternities and sororities at, at like the university, um, <clears throat> Akron or even Kent. And uh, uh, Megan uh, Goldthwaite or Morgan Gold, Goldthwaite uh, had had some connections there that um, thought we might be able to, you know, in thoughts of bringing on new memberships, get them while they're young and, and try and get them involved and interested in what we're doing. So if we could do some joint efforts there, we thought that might produce uh, fruit and membership uh, further down the road. Well, that's awesome. And don't, don't forget that if these younger folks you're reaching out to happen to have big guns and they want to be a paddler you could it's never too early to start recruiting them there and then we'll wear them down if they don't join rotary right away absolutely dr Rob, and you have people already uh, assigned to some swim lanes or that are engaged uh i you know i i, I saw the the message late on that and and uh working with with blake on that i'm not sure where we're at on that right now okay but again for anybody that's that wasn't part of one of these these listening groups, please make a note that uh, if you're interested, you can contact David Hall or Blake Babcock. Okay, this is the Rotary Experience and Jack Herrig was the facilitator, Linda Farkas scribed, and their uh, focus was really creating standard work or a, a graph or grid so that we know what the club is doing, not just what are they doing as far as service projects in, internally, but what are they doing both locally, district, zone-wise and international. So again, that, I think that was a purpose to inform our membership, but also to identify opportunities and gaps and create an orientation plan for new members, as well as updates for us more seasoned Rotarians. And then the third short term was to update or distribute bio information of new members. You've heard that before because that's an overlapping theme. And then intentional highlights of the member, not only the member, but their, their vocation uh, each week in the newsletter. And I wanna talk with uh, the team there because I think uh, we've already started to do some activity. Cheryl's already been all over this and I have a couple suggestions, but we're certainly looking forward to what they would do. And then you can see long-term, uh, could we develop employees to gain new skills and make it a developmental process for the experience? And do we partner with community, uh, the Akron Community Foundation and, and Akron Community to support local businesses? Jack, did, did we catch that? One of the concerns is that we're working hard as an organization to let the community know what we do. Uh, but I, we, we feel that many of our members don't know what we do and they don't know what the opportunities are so that if, if we can work through our group, work through the club and the sister club to learn what our members are doing both vocationally and service oriented will probably have a whole new that is, would be really flavorful and I think enhance the whole Rotary experience. It's, it's been interesting. I cleaned my 
office and I came up with things from many years ago. And one of them was a note with a photograph of a Barbert and Rotarian who was the one that got Vivian and I interested in polio and the foundation. And I thought about George's impact on our lives and what's been passed on to others through his work. And we've got 130 some Rotarians in our club that are capable of the same thing. And the impacts that you will make on other people's lives that you will never know will be just marvelous. Well, thanks, Jack. I know that you didn't have people that were assigned, but you made some suggestions and Lorraine has agreed to help us out. She doesn't know what she doesn't know and how she can help us. And uh, the other people that you mentioned weren't available yet. So again, if people are looking at defining advertising and uh, planning ways to make it more, uh, more transparent for our own members and for those outside, please uh, reach out to Jack and let him know your interest or, or Lorraine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall and tell you Lorraine, since that was another theme that we got back from other other new members is you know, bring me in. So I'm going to practice what we preach there. OK, engage. Uh, I facilitated this one along with Christina Horak. And I don't believe is Christina on the call today. If you are Christina, unmute. And you took good notes. I don't see it. So our discussion, and I think Carol Marturo uh, Becker's on, she, she was really important to help us just step back and say, okay, before we decide what we're going to do to engage our members, why don't we find out how they want to be connected and engaged? Um, and the point was made that being, being a member of Rotary isn't an, is an engagement. Being a Rotarian is engagement. So we really need to look at that and uh, I may reach out to Carol because I know she's pretty facile with these surgeries, these, these uh, surgeries with these surveys as is Sandy Narragon. Um, we were also wanted to facilitate networking right now, periodic vocational icebreakers, uh, add the title vocation avocation on our Zoom name, which is why I was telling Claudine to do that now. And then hopefully when we're in person, real name tags, we'll have some fun way to be able to uh, say, ask me about X and you can write in what, what's on your uh, mind that, that day, whether it's social. Um, and also we, we, at that meeting, it was decided that we should volunteer new members to play in your group or activity. I think Steve Bosart made that comment. So I may be calling out you, Steve. I might be calling you out, Steve. Uh, and then again, the, the theme distribute bio information of new members. So again, that's important as we get new members then to get them engaged and keep them engaged by promoting their uh, vocations and avocations. And then we looked at long-term things. Could we link with Leadership Akron? Hudson links with Leadership Hudson, one of their rotaries. And could we partner up with some of their educational tours for those of us who are not native Akronites? And I know when I did the Leadership Akron, uh, I learned more things than my colleagues that lived in Akron uh, their whole lives. So I think that there's, that's probably a good opportunity to do some networking. And then we thought from an inclusion point of view, again, the theme that we heard before, uh, exposure to new cultures within Akron and beyond that through our Rotary Youth Exchange, as well as our Rotaract and Interact members. So again, um, We'll see who, who is excited about getting engaged there and we can bone tell some other folks. So uh, Steve, Carol, do you wanna make a comment since no one else is here and I feel like I'm doing too much talking? Um, this is Carol, hi everybody. Um, just a couple comments about engagement in general. And that is, um, you know, through some of the surveys that were done, um, you know, in to, um, 
um, help support information and content going into the strategic plan, people indicated that they like to engage in different ways. So some people like to engage through the meetings and that's all they want to do. Other people want to engage through participating in initiatives. And so really the key is to make sure that um, there's communication channels to everybody and that people have an opportunity to be asked to be engaged in a variety of different ways that Rotary engages people. And so I think that that's really the, the key thing to keep in mind is that we want to be sure that we're asking people um, to engage and to engage in all the different ways that Rotary um, offers. And it's challenging right now without the opportunity to be in person, but as things begin to open up more, I think that will be helpful as well. So I think it's just to make sure that we're not just focused on um, engaging people who attend meetings and asking them to participate in other initiatives, but also to reach out to the whole membership because there may be ways that some people who maybe don't attend meetings may want to engage actively in some of the other initiatives. So that's really the only thing I wanted to add. Thanks, Rob. Uh, what, what, thank you, Carol. What, what I'd like to uh, mention, especially at the time when we are contemplating sometime, not before July, but uh, going to more in, you know, in-person activities. Are there engagement strategies for those of you on the call who have suddenly found yourself able to come back to Rotary? Mm -hmm. And once we're live, your schedules may be such that, that this isn't quite as convenient and that we need some hybrid activities to be able to keep people that found themselves able to be engaged in the Zoom world so we don't lose that. So mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned and thanks, Carol. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Innovate. Karen led this and Terry Dalton was the scribe. And the, the elements that I extracted is uh, develop succession planning, onboarding, formal policies and procedure so we can gain some efficiency. So every year we're not reinventing the wheel or we're we're trying to ask who has the institutional memory, what do we do with this? Uh, membership pathway developments, again, that's a theme that we heard uh, for inclusivity, but also for innovation. Younger professionals under 35 couples or corporate memberships and create a video to make Club Runner more, a more powerful tool to leverage uh, video and onboarding checklist or encourage members to better take advantage of the website. So uh, Cheryl, I, I, I heard uh, that, that team talk about the fact that uh, we may have to, to include the, the Zoom queen in helping us do some of this uh, planning for video work. And then uh, inclusion men mentioned membership pathway development and uh, have a more robust or access to a robust web presence. Karen or Terry, were there other things you'd highlight? Well, I think um, just so you know that Jacinto and I are taking um, uh, leadership in the membership pathway because we're doing the bylaws and our membership uh, are in the bylaws. And so we're talking to other clubs and kind of just figuring out what that looks like for other folks. So um, that one's kind of being spearheaded through that way. Um, then um, I think the thing that we really need is someone that's technologically savvy. Um, I always talk about, um, you know, in leadership, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, would things still go on? And we were, ho and, and um, you know, Club Runner may be it. I don't know enough. Cheryl showed me, I mean, I use it so much more now because of the things she showed me. But um, whether it's Club Runner or whether it's a Google's doc that we could have that historical knowledge and hand things on. I know when I took over bylaws, I got a bunch of Word docs and um, they're just being you know, forwarded back through, which is not the best way. Sometimes they get lost. And even Jacinto and I you know, don't have a common place. So we're just sending documents back and forth to each other. So if there's somebody that's technologically savvy and willing to take on that to do a SharePoint or a Google's doc or something um, that would allow us to do that, that would be great. And we do have storage right. on Club Runner, Karen, which we talked about uh, for our historical documents. Uh, which is a great place to store our historical documents so we can go back and gather that information for you. So we can go into more detail offline. 
Yeah. And I think that just everyone being able to know where those are. Um, so I think that goes right to the club runner. It's a powerful tool if you know how to use it. <laughs> and I would welcome doing that training for all the, all the committee chairs. <laughs> and I think right, we'll, we'll look for opportunities and, and perhaps some of our folks that we know have digital experience already because that's part of their vocation or their avocation are people that you could reach out to and volunteer ask or, or volunteer. So uh, we can get you some names. Uh, that, that sounds like a great, you're off to a great start. And uh, Sam Lapica mentioned that the meeting that he was at in uh, Missouri, uh, they were duly in person and digital, but the digital folks were kind of like they were in the cheap seats and there wasn't a lot of connection with the people in the virtual forum versus the real forum. And Cheryl's been doing some work with the district about those opportunities. So I think that's a great point, Sam. And it's a good opportunity for us moving forward. And then I believe last but not least is Transform. And I know uh, Katie Miller and Sandy Aragon led this one. Okay, so the current slide really is the Transform immediately is lean into some all already existing partnerships in the North Hill and look what we could offer them that they need, not what we think they need. We can leverage the International Institute, Cindy Kane has connections there, the Asian Services Incorporated, Sam uh, Lapica is in, connected there as well as the Celebration Church and North High School. We've got connections with Steve Bowie um, and Susan Coble Hall as well as I would, I would say Mario McCall because he was doing some work there as well. Uh, if he doesn't get pulled into the technology piece that we just talked about with Karen. Um, and then begin dialogue with the LeBron James Foundation for a potential long-term project, respite for the families that have been ravaged by the pandemic. So we realized that a lot of the teachers, there was a striking article in the Beacon Journal, Michael Shearer, thank you, that, uh, that highlighted you know, when a teacher went to do a home visit because the student wasn't visible, they found out that there were multiple mementos of family members who had passed during the pandemic. So I can't imagine learning virtually entirely, yet doing that while you've had other more pressing issues come up. So we, they thought that that would be a great way for us to look at a way to combine our awesome resource with camp with offering support in some way with the folks that are already doing some of the social work and outreach with the I Promise schools. So I think that lean into the North Hill fits with inclusion, uh, visibility impact. Can you imagine what the Akron Rotary Foundation camp and club could do in combination with uh, the LeBron James Foundation? I think that uh, Katie and, and Sandy in their usual style have already assigned tasks and, and are moving forward. Katie and, and Sandy, do you wanna highlight? Uh, yeah, Sandy wants me to recap. She's having the audio problems. Um, our group is really intentional and very fast working. Um, we haven't moved on anything because we're waiting for the club approval on it, but we did identify people to work in the North Hill to identify what they needed. On our long term, we started with Akron Public Schools and just quickly went to uh, LeBron James Family Foundation, referencing that article that I had read. And um, that community in particular is being ravaged by gun violence, addiction, and COVID. Those children are selected by lottery as the lowest performing students in Akron Public Schools. They get financial services, they get food pantry, they have laundry services because most of them are living in trauma and in transition housing. A lot of them are homeless. Um, so my thought, you know, we kind of just brainstorm, like we have a camp that offers respite. These families need respite. And how could that be uh, something that we could work together towards? And we had Mela on my group and from the Akron Rotary Foundation. And it just seemed to support all three legs of the stool that we're always trying to talk about. Um, also a lot of these kids are on the autism spectrum as well. So our camp has knows how to deal with this. We wouldn't have to recreate the wheel. LeBron James Family Foundation already has processes in place for moving their children and families for group activities. The conversation hasn't started yet, clearly. We have to wait for approval on that, but we have invited uh, Michelle Campbell, the executive director of the LeBron James Family Foundation. We'll be speaking to our club next month and 
thinking that once everybody gets to hear really what they're doing, that then that can, conversation can proceed in our club before we approach the foundation. So I think this is exciting as a, as a transformative project for our club and, and it aligns with what we already have as our strengths. So that's the presentation and we'll get this uh, PowerPoint out to all of you. I think the creativity that was demonstrated by those of you who were able to participate in the small group activities should really jumpstart our club activities and get our strategic plan moving forward so that Steve Bowie can continue to take it and run with it. So thanks for your indulgence of my uh, Venn diagrams. I was, not, I was a science teacher, not, not a math teacher, but uh, we use those once in a while. And uh, I appreciate those of you that facility, you volunteered to facilitate. Little did you know that you'd be part of my action accountability team moving forward, but I have a feeling you you suspected that. So we'll have follow-ups uh, in, a, in a, a few months. We'll get the, uh, the teams to report out to our board meetings. And as we have projects that align with any or all of these, we will be bringing them back to the club because there's always room for more folks. Next week's speaker, Terry Dalton, is going to work with our scholarship program, our scholarship winners. And for the next week, there are actually no birthdays until we get to St. Patrick's Day, President-elect Steve. Um, and a happy join date. Uh, David Showers is 20 years in, in Rotary and Dan Spada is 33 years. So thanks for your energy, your enthusiasm, your participation. And I'm looking forward to us really continuing to uh, fly high and, and thrive. And any of you who are feeling like you're gonna be happy next week and you have a special photo that you wanna highlight, please get that to Cheryl before noon on Monday. Any final questions or comments? If no, the meeting is adjourned.